Did you know that scientific studies show that good communicators have higher self-esteem, make more money, and have fewer divorces than their peers? Another study by the International Journal of Business Communication indicated that good communication skills was the number one trait people look for when they hire somebody. And the American Journal of Small Business did research that found out that the most important trait for entrepreneurs is good oral communication as well as good listening skills. In this episode of In 60, we're going to discuss the three most common problems people have with communication and we're going to discuss five things that you can do in order to improve your communication skills. Also, I'm going to ask you to get involved by listing your favorite communication technique down below, or here's a good one, listing your least favorite communication style down below. If you make a comment down below, I'll give you a free digital copy of my latest book, Digital Marketing Growth Hacks, written by 13 of the world's greatest digital marketers. Okay, ready to get started in this episode of N60? Let's dive on in. <laughs> All right, today's episode is sponsored by Agorapulse. Agorapulse is a social media management platform that you can use in order to make sure that your campaigns are getting to the right people at the right time with the right message. All right, let's talk about some of the challenges people face when they're trying to be effective communicators. Challenge number one, providing a solution before you've gotten all the details. Now I know I do this all the time and it's basically comes from a place of love. I wanna help people. So I listen to what they're saying. I think I know where they're going with this. I'm gonna start providing details. But the problem is, is that most people need to get things off their chest, need to talk about things, need to process the information they're telling you before you provide the solution. So wait until they finish providing the details before you jump in and provide solutions. Challenge number two, multitasking. You do it. I do it, it doesn't work. Let's just stop right now. The bottom line is when you sit down and are listening to somebody either on the phone or via anything that you're doing and you're multitasking, whether that's answering emails or cleaning up your desktop, you're not doing them a favor, you're not doing yourself a favor. Studies show that when you multitask, you are actually less effective than when you focus and zero in on what you're doing. So when it comes to communication, one of the challenges is that people try to multitask while they're having conversations, doesn't work, let's make a deal. Let's not do that anymore. Challenge number three, avoiding bad news. Now, if you're in an office environment, bad news sometimes happens. You just gotta deal with it. But a lot of us want to avoid that bad news. So we'll avoid that conversation that's a tough conversation with somebody. We'll avoid talking to somebody and having an email dialogue with them about a difficult piece of information. All that does is inhibit communication. You have to get past that Look at things dispassionately, look at things objectively, and absorb the information and move through it so that you can get to the other side. So don't avoid bad news, embrace it, jump in on it so you can problem solve and get to the good news that's right around the corner. Okay, we've just covered the three challenges that most people face when it comes to communication. Now let's talk about five things that you can do in order to improve your communication skills. Let's dive in. Tip number one. What is tip number one? <laughs> Tip number one, question for clarification. This is actually a really good tip. When I was younger, I used to feel like if I asked questions in a conversation, people would think I was dumb. I'm almost embarrassed to admit that, but it was true. But I realized later as I got more mature in my career, the more questions you ask, the more people know that you're engaged and actually having an active communication with them. So be sure to question for clarification. Your questions will actually show that you're listening and will actually show that you're smart enough to ask the right questions questions that are important to whatever it is you're trying to solve. So the bottom line is question for clarification. That improves communication. You hear the bird out there? I do. That improves the communication. And the bottom line is it'll make your communication more effective with whoever it is you're talking to. Tip number two, think backwards. Now, this is an interesting thing that a mentor named Jerry Brown taught me, which is basically getting inside the mind of the people you're talking to and understanding their perspective in the dialogue you're having. When you think backwards and get inside somebody's mind and then work backwards from there, it'll improve your communication because you'll be coming from a place of empathy, understanding what it is they're feeling as they go through this communication with you. 
Tip number three, mirror the person you're talking to. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm having a conversation with somebody, if they speak at the same pace I speak at, if they use the same vocabulary I speak at, if they go ahead and use the same body language that I use, I always feel more comfortable in talking with them. You feel the same way. So if you're having a conversation with somebody and you need it to be persuasive and effective, make sure that you mirror their body language, mirror their vocabulary, mirror their pace, mirror their tone, and what you'll find is that it improves the level of communication you have with them. If you walk into an office environment and you find that somebody's very soft-spoken and very passive and very quiet, then you're gonna to wanna to match that for your communication skills. The opposite is true too. If somebody's coming balls to the wall, super loud, super engaging, you just wanna match that so that you can make sure that you're mirroring what they're doing and you'll find that the communication works that much better. All right, I'm gonna close this because the bird's squawking. No snoring either, Bess. Tip number four, listen with the back of your neck. This is something that Bob Berg of the Go-Giver series talks about in his books and on his podcasts and everything else that he does. Listening with the back of your neck is a tactile way of helping you understand that you need to be present and engaged and in the moment in order to communicate effectively. If you find yourself drifting away and starting to look at other things and think about other things, Feel the back of your neck and listen with the back of your neck. It's a very interesting concept because it really is very tactile and it'll help you understand the best ways to communicate and to listen to other people as you're having a dialogue with them. Tip number five, focus on how people feel. Now, Maya Angelou is credited with having said, People may not always remember what you say, but they'll always remember how you make them feel. If you think about that message, then it basically means people will relate to you if you make them feel good about the communication. Now, sometimes you're having difficult conversations. It may be firing somebody, it may be talking to somebody about not getting a raise. You can still make them feel good by having clarity and closure in what it is you're talking to them. It's not gonna be the best conversation they've ever had, but if they have clarity in what you're saying and closure in what you're saying, they're gonna feel good. So remember that concept. People may not remember every word you say, but they will remember how you made them feel in the conversation. By the way, here's a little tip for you. Maya Angelou wasn't the first person to say that. A gentleman by the name of Carl Buhner, Buhner, Carl W. Buhner was attributed with saying it first in 1971. Interesting. So there you have it, the three biggest challenges people face when it comes to communication and five things you can do in order to be a better communicator. Now, what I want you to do is go down below, leave a comment either with your own communication tip or your least favorite communication style. Leave that comment and I will send you a free digital copy of my latest book, Digital Marketing Growth Hacks. My name is Jamie Turner. We want to thank our sponsor for today's episode, Agora Pulse. Thank you, Agora Pulse. We're here because of you guys. My name is Jamie Turner. This has been In 60 and I'll catch you next time. Na, 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 na.